Describe Domain Name System. There are two types of client-server programs. First is used directly by the user, such as email. Second supports other application programs. The Domain Name System, DNS, is a supporting program that is used by other programs such as to find the IP address of an email recipient. Describe Hierarchical Namespace. In a hierarchical namespace, each name is combination of several parts as type of the organization, name of an organization, departments in the organization. A central authority can assign the part of the name that defines the nature and name of the organization. The other things of the name the organization provides itself. The organization can add suffixes or prefixes to the name to define its host. The company need not worry about the prefix if it is same as that of another organization because, even if part of an address is the same, the whole address is different. Define fully qualified domain name and partially qualified domain name. In hierarchical namespace, names are defined in an inverted tree structure with the root at the top. The tree can have only 128 levels, level 0, root, to level 127. Each node in the tree has a label which is a string with a maximum of 63 characters. The root label is an L string, empty string. In this tree, all the labels have different name, which guarantee the uniqueness of the domain names. A full domain name is a sequence of labels separated by dots. The domain names are always read from the node up to the root. Fully qualified domain name. If a label is terminated by a null string or empty string, it is called a fully qualified domain name. FQDN, partially qualified domain name. If a label is not terminated by a null string, it is called a partially qualified domain name. PQDN. A PQDN starts from a node, but it does not end with the root. What is transmission impairment? Signals need transmission media for travel from one point to another. Transmission media are not perfect because it provides resistance. The imperfection causes signal impairment. This means that the signal at the beginning of the medium is not the same as the signal at the end of the medium. What is sent is not what is received. There are three causes of impairment or attenuation, distortion, and noise. Describe attenuation, distortion, and noise in brief. Attenuation. When a signal travels through a medium, it loses some of its energy due to resistance of the medium. This loss of energy is called attenuation. This is the reason why a wire carrying electric signals gets warm. Some of the electrical energy in the signal is converted to heat. To overcome for this problem, amplifiers are used to amplify the signal. Unit of the decibel is used to find out if a signal has lost or gained strength. The decibel, dB, measures the relative strengths of two signals or one signal at two different points. If decibel is negative then a signal is attenuated and if positive signal is amplified dot distortion. When the signal travels through the medium from one point to another it may chance to change the form or shape of signal. It is called distortion. Distortion can occur in a composite signal, made up of different frequencies. Each signal component has its own propagation speed through a traveling medium and, therefore, its own delay in reaching at the final destination. Mean signal components at the receiver phase is different from what they had at the sender. Noise. The third cause of impairment is noise. Following types of noise are possible. Thermal noise. Induced noise. Crosstalk noise. Impulse noise. These noise may corrupt the signal. Thermal noise is produced due to the random motion of electrons in a wire which creates an extra signal not originally sent by the transmitter. Induced noise comes from sources such as motors and other electronic appliances. These devices act as a sending antenna, and the transmission medium acts as the receiving antenna. Crosstalk is the effect of one wire on the other. Impulse noise comes from power lines, lightning, etc. Thank you.